Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King 3 and today I'm going to be giving you part 4 of what if Naruto had all curse techniques from the Jujutsu Kaisen guys. Remember to get this one too. 100 like as usual. Share this to all of your friends on your social media platform. And also guys, don't forget to go ahead and check out the brand new series over on Anime Symbol of what if Naruto was the reincarnation of MASH. And enjoy that guys. And remember if you're new, don't forget to go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. Yes, I indeed have four channels which I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and destroy that red subscribe button. So without further ado, or wasting any more time, what do you say begin this new episode? So the last part that we left off, we started. Beyond the elemental nation, there was a war that had taken place. The war was so catastrophic, it was so bad for all that walk on the elemental nation that the Sage of Six Pad Sons, who were at war themselves, had to cease their fighting and join forces. They knew if they did not, they would be virtually wiped out, all of them. So they had to put aside their differences for some time to join forces to face off against an even greater threat. Something that even eclipsed the Jubi. Even the Sage of Six Path had came off retirement in order to fight. And in the end of the battle, he died. Yes, this battle claimed his life. That man that had fought his mother, who was a goddess of destruction, and the ten-tailed beasts, that man who had took them on with his Susanoo and his brother at his side, had fell to this greater threat, this eclipsing threat. They remember the name quite well. They knew it quite well. It was a clan of a few people but yet their might was so strong they put the great sage to an end. Odas. We then skip to the original time as Naruto Oda stood in front of Gato and the mayhem and chaos that was all over the place. Naruto had infiltrated Gato location and wiped out his 200 plus ninjas without even blinking. There was no shred of mercy. His bloodlust reeked and ripped through the entire facility like they were nothing. Even when Gato collapsed down to his knees and begged, pleaded for his life, Naruto cut him down without a shred of mercy. Naruto then made his way to where Zabuza and Haku were located. He came inside like a ghost. Haku would have been dead if he made a move and Zabuza knew that so he relented. Naruto tossed him a scroll. A larger payment than what he was supposed to get was inside. Take that and leave the island now. If he come back here by tomorrow and they were still here, he would execute the both of them. Fear shivers went down the both of their spines, the way he creeped in like a ghost. Something was wrong with this boy. Zabuza could see that quite clearly. It was like his back was weighted down by death and destruction. Just looking into his eyes, Zabuza could feel that. When Naruto arrived, Sai was there. He was an informant of his old master Donzo. It seems like they were questioning his loyalty. And how he was becoming soft or something like that. However, Naruto showed that he wasn't anything of the slightest. After butchering over 200, plus without even blinking an eye. As Naruto told Sai to leave because he was getting on his nerves. Sai knew better than to go up against Naruto. 
he knew the person that Naruto was. His name might not be known in the outside world, but within the organization, he was a force to be reckoned with. Even amongst their emotionless group, he was a soulless demon. The next morning, Gato's body was found. From what things were set up, it seems like Gato had went against Zabuza, his own employee, and he slit his throat with his blade. The people celebrated and cheered. Tsunami came over towards Naruto and hugged him. She thanked him for getting rid of Gato as Naruto was about to say something but she told him that she knew. Right after she spoke to him the other night and he told her that she would no longer have to fear them. It will be quite alright. As she knew that he was behind it. Months passed as they waited there until the bridge was completed. At the end of it, she kissed him on his cheek and she wished him farewell. Naruto had been second guessing if his old master Donzo wanted to take over the land of wave and put the people through more agony. That is why Sai had questioned where his loyalty lie. However, Naruto did not return any full frontal answer with that. Returning back to the hidden leaf, Kakashi was also suspicious of Naruto actions as well. Even Hirzen as well was suspicious but they had no evidence that he was the one that eradicated Gato and all of his people. They had no shred of evidence so they could not base their theory on anything. Months passed after that. In a grueling battle at the waterfall village, Naruto and the others faced off against Suyin and his people. Shibuki, the leader of that village, was there at their side. When Naruto arrived in the end, Naruto faced off against him. As Naruto showed him that, the both of them were not on the same level, despite the fact that he drank the hero water. Sasuke now had his Sharingan, and even he could see the clear difference in his strength and Naruto's strength as well. As Naruto obliterated Suyin, like he was absolutely nothing, he treated him like he was simply taking out the garbage. With that, the group was sent on another high rank mission. Team 7 had shown the potential to be beyond great. Even Mito was excelling as the girl was slowly and more getting control of the power that resided inside of her. Sasuke was growing exponentially. The two of them had been training with Naruto. Team Dynamics was coming along great. So they were sent on a mission to help a town that was allied with Konoha. It was a mining town and they had rare supplies and elements on the ground. However, there was also a Kumo team sent there. It turns out the man that was disturbing the town was a former Kumo ninja. So with that, the two teams split apart in the village pretending to be civilians. They both came across the scene. Her name was Yujito. As she saw Naruto, however, she did not know that he was a shinobi but he knew who exactly she was. Because of all the database that Donzo had on the Jinjulikis. So yes he knew exactly who she was. He followed her as they arrived. Both of the teams send off their signals. As team 7 and her team. With the other two members arrive on the scene. Root and her. Face off against the leader of this little group. However he was able to use explosives. To knock them on their ground. The both of them couldn't afford to use any flashy techniques. Because the thing might come down. She was rather shocked though as Naruto had hopped on top of her saving her life. Why would he do that? He saw her head bang. Why would he risk his life for her? However, the cave-in came down anyway and the both of them. Watch as massive chunk of earth came raining down upon them. So yeah guys, basically let's play off your skin. Switch across the place check of yourself. So what do you say begin this new episode? Everything seemed so weird. It was like being in a dream. But knowing that you were dreaming. It was like floating but at the same time running. It felt so off and strange. Naruto found himself in the abyss. Surrounded by nothing and everything at once. It was like he was between life and death itself. Pulled into a separate dimension that he didn't understand. That is when he heard it. 
my son. Luther turned to face the person that was standing there as he saw the outline of someone, a man, approaching him. You have no idea how long I've waited to meet you and speak to you, my son. You were just a child the last time I saw you. Having no conception of the world around you, having no understanding of the name you bear, having no understanding who you are. But you are my son. You are new to Oda. And I've come to tell you who you are, to tell you about your people and what is your destiny. What we and our people have left behind for you. You are my son and you are the heir to the Oda. And now in this time, you shall break our chains. You shall break the shackles that bind us and free us and step in the public eye, just like before, with you at the hall, with you at the head, as the ruler, my son. The person finally stepped forward enough for Nuta to see him as he placed a hand on Nuta's head. Nuta still couldn't see his eyes though, but his smile. He felt this before, felt the connection between them. Our connection has been made soon. You will understand everything. You will know everything, my son. He said with a smile on his face. Nuta's eyes snapped open as he looked around, trying to understand where he was. The place was dark. That is when he noticed the bandage around his arm. Nuta was confused until he glanced up to see someone looking ahead. His movement caused the person to turn back towards him as once again they look into each other's eyes. You're awake, she said to him. Yes, it would seem that way, said Nuta as he picked himself up. As he looked at her, you did this, he said, looking toward his arm. Yes, I did. You were going to bleed out and die if I did not do something. Nuta decided to keep it to himself that... He had a rather fast regeneration ability. As he looked at her, thank you, he said. Why? She said to him. Why what? Why did you save my life? Well, I think we're pretty much even, he said, looking toward his arm. Don't you think so? This is not a laughing matter, she said. She was rather serious. Why would you risk your life to save me? From what I saw out there, you're a Konoha ninja and you had enough time to see my Kumo headband. So tell me right here and now, why did you risk your life to save me? Are you some kind of idiot or something? Huh, you know, I'm betting that this is the first time someone gets so angry after being saved. She glared at him. Alright, calm down, said Naruto. I saved you because... I wanted to. You understand the body moving on instinct, right? To help and save whoever is in need. But we're not from the same village. In fact, our village don't get along that well. And that doesn't matter to me. You're still a human being, are you not? You're still someone with feelings and emotions. Fighting is something, war is something, but saving people, it's the least I can do. After all the life these hands have taken away, that's not much of a response. We both killed. We're both ninjas. Yes, I suppose you're right, said Naruto. However, she was wrong. Her hands might be stained by a few bodies, but his was stained by thousands upon thousands. Well, it doesn't matter now. You're alive and okay. And as I said before, I don't care which village you're from, you were in need and I help you. And besides, you could have left me there. You could have tried to kill me in my sleep but yet, you dragged me away from the ruckus, did you not? Yes I did. So why did you help me? I do not know she said. Well I guess we're both just complicated. So where the hell are we? From what I can guess we're deep underground. The explosives brought us deep. However, we have a problem. 
what is that? The dynamite that the miners were using to safely get around. The pack was spread out because of the avalanche. And now they're all over the place beyond the walls with the fluid secretion. Do you know what that is? Yes, said Naruto. Too much movement or too much hassle will cause it to explode. And you don't have any idea where they're located? No. So we're basically in a minefield. And the wrong movement or the wrong exertion of force might blow this entire place up. Well, that's not our only problem. It is stable right now, but come here. Listen. As Naruto heard the movement, it is stable now, but it won't last forever. The wrong move, the wrong pressure from the outside. Damn it, they're fighting. This whole place can go up in a massive explosion, with you and I right inside of it. She had a way to get out of here. However, if she did use that way, he was going to die. She could simply draw upon the power of the Nibi. That should be enough to protect her from the blasts. However, the chakra would burn him to pieces. If the chakra did not kill him, the explosion would definitely kill him. And she was struggling to do that. Never had she thought about another ninja's life before, other than the ones from her village. And here she was struggling with the thought of ending his life. What the hell was wrong with her, she thought to herself. She should just do this and help her friends. They were in the middle of a battle. However, she wanted to find an alternative way to get out of here. We haven't properly introduced herself. I am Naruto Oda, he said. Pleasure to meet you. She looked at him. Yujito, she said. She even gave him her proper name as well. Naruto knew who she was and he knew the power that resided inside of her. However, it seems like she didn't want to make that public. But he wondered though, why wasn't she going to use it? With that amount of power, she could simply blast her way out of here without any repercussion at all. But yet, she was not using it. Wait, did she fear? The flames are the chakra from the beast killing him. Naruto wondered if she was doing this for his benefit. However, he decided to be quiet about it for now to see what would be her next move. So Yujito, I guess we're gonna find an alternate way out of here, said Naruto as he gazed towards the other entrance. However, they had no idea where it went and they had to be tremendously careful as well. I guess so, she said. Let's go. Meanwhile, on the outside, Mito duck as she proceeded to spin and jump and slam her heel. Her force had gotten so strong she sent the ninja sailing. However, right behind him, his back was hit with another force. Sasuke cracking his knee inside of the guy's back. As Mito was above him now as she dropped both her hands in his temple, causing his head to smash into the earth. He was out cold, over to the other side. Ringo had three daggers as he was launching them towards the two ninjas. Atsui on his right, Kakashi on his left. This was history in the making. Normally, you wouldn't see Konoha and Kumo ninjas ever working together but they had a goal as they clashed against the man the brute of the man had raw extreme raw strength and his lightning was making it difficult to approach him however he was not the only lightning expert Ringo the lightning thief Atsubi glanced towards Kakashi Hatiki. the both of them had the same goal the both of them just had two members fell inside of that mine pit that Ringo put them in. So they had no choice as they rushed towards the man. Ringo was starting to sweat. One he could handle for the time being but the both of them 
it was going to be just too much. Meanwhile, that was going on. Yujito was starting to get concerned. This was not right. It was strange how easy she could talk to this Naruto Oda. Yujito was known to be icy to most of the male population back home. Her being 17, she had guys from 14 to 18 asking her out. However, she just had no interest in any of them. Most of them actually bore her. Yes, they bore her. But he on the other hand, she found it so easy to talk to him. And they were nothing, not allies, not friends, nothing at all. That is what she found so concerning and weird. That is when he told her, shh, as he listened. She also heard it. Help, help me. The both of them made their way towards a giant slab of stone that cut off the other path. Are you okay? Naruto asked. No, my leg. I can't get it out. I'm pinned down over here. I'm bleeding badly. I need some help. Are you one of the miners? Yes. I was doing a late shift. And then everything just went off. There's a lot of dynamite all over the place. Most of them were on the top ridge, but I saw it fell when I collapsed down here. You have to be careful. They're highly explosive. Yeah, I know. Just stay still. We're gonna help. Wait, are you crazy? He just said to himself. One wrong move and everything goes up in flames. Naruto could feel the guy's heart beat. From his sensory, he could feel everything from where he was. And he could tell that he was screwed. Because he was going to do something really stupid. Most did not know but Naruto loved to save people. Because he believed that it was a good thing to do for him after all the lives that he took. Yes, he always tried to save everyone that needs saving. Because he knew that he was a monster. And he knew that eventually his time would come. Yes, Donzo had instilled the knowledge of leading the village. Naruto found that as a great opportunity to protect and govern over the people of his village. His mind ran on Mito, the adorable little girl. She was like a little sister to him. She wanted to be a Hokage herself. Naruto knew how to get out of here. If Yujito transformed, the miner was going to die. Naruto was certain that if he used any of his abilities in here, he wasn't sure that he would survive the blast. Naruto asked the miner, how much TNT did they use? Just how much explosives? Huh. The man said hundreds. One of those was enough to blow a pathway. As they use it at moderation, half a stick and hundreds were all over the place. Naruto knew how to get them out of here. However, they had to go. He had to slow down the explosion. What are you thinking, said Yujito. As Naruto looked at her, Would you mind kissing me, he said. W what? She said as she took a step back. W what did you just say? She swear that she was not hearing right. I said, Would you mind kissing me, said Naruto. What the hell are you on about? It's just... I've never kissed a girl before. Never had a girlfriend before. My earlier years was a bit too much for that. So yeah. And there's a chance that I might die today. And having my first kiss before I do so would be fantastic. Nobody is going to die, she said. We can get out of here. Her face was a bit red. Because the thing was she never actually kissed anyone before either and him asking that out of the blue had taken her by surprise well i do have a plan and if i'm successful you and the miner can get to safety and there's a 90 percent chance that i might die no 
tell me the plan, she said. Let me do it. I... I have a better chance of surviving. How so? She grit her teeth. I just can. It will be too risky, said Naruto. Damn it, I'm a Jinjuliki. Do you know what that is, she asks. Yes, said Naruto. Then you know what that means. I can survive this. Yes, you can. But you don't have the means. But I have to let you and the miner escape. Damn it, what are you talking about, she said to him. It doesn't matter now, said Naruto. You can feel it, can't you? She closed her eyes for a moment. The shaking. The fighting outside. Damn it, she cursed. Naruto knew that his clone wouldn't be strong enough. He did not have the normal Shadow Clone Jutsu or the normal Clone Jutsu at all. It was another technique of his, a cursed technique, where he could duplicate himself. However, it would not be strong enough to contain the blast for them to escape. Well, time's up, said Naruto. I guess I'm gonna have to do this. He brought his hand together. Yujito was biting down hard. As she looked towards the wall, as she felt the shaking getting harder and harder, and him about to do something, and she thought about his request. She had no idea why she even did this, but her legs move on its own. She spun him around before, placing a kiss right on his lips, and something just clicked. What seemed to be hours was just mere seconds. As the both of them broke away from one another. She looked at him and he looked at her. The both of them confused. By what the hell they just felt. They were confused as hell. However, Nuta smiled. Thank you, he said. He then slammed his hand together. Suddenly roots broke out of the earth. The moment he did that, he heard an explosion. Roots ripped through the wall and grabbed the miner and grabbed Yujito. They tore through the ceiling and launched the both of them outside. Explosions went off and shoot right through the hole that Naruto creates. It would have blown them to pieces. However, this was the reason why he stayed behind. This was the reason why he remained where he was. Massive ice spikes rose up. However, the explosion blew them asunder, but it gave enough for them to go through unharmed. The moment they fell through, a massive fiery blaze shot outwards, blazing hot that would have burned the both of them up. She grabbed onto the miner as she flipped and landed on her feet if Naruto had been with them. The process would have been slower and they would have been hit and given where the explosion came from. The explosion did not came from below, it came from above where one of the dynamites were located and that was their problem. Naruto had no idea where the dynamites were. So he had to stay where he was to see where the explosion came from to stop it from reaching her. Atsui was shocked, so was Samui. How the hell did they? How the hell did she manage to escape that? Given the explosions and how it shot out, they felt it but yet something slowed it down. Kakashi looked around, not seeing Ruta anywhere with her, when suddenly, BOOM! The whole place erupted in a violent blast. It shoot all the way up into the heaven, dust and smoke filling the entire place. Sasuke's eyes was widening in shock as he understand what was going on. Naruto did not come out. Mito rushed over. Lady! You! Lady! Where is he? Naruto fall down there with you as well. Where is Naruto? She yelled. Yujito could only look towards her with a sad sorry, sorrow look in her eyes. Where is he? Mito yell. However, before Yujito could say anything, Ringo saw the perfect opportunity. He knew that he was going to die. 
Yes, he was going to die, he couldn't defeat these two by himself. That girl was the container of the two tails. Very valuable assets. If he was to take her as a hostage, there was no way they can ever make a move against him. You was in a distraction. He pushed off with all of his might as he appeared behind you, Jito. Mito's eyes went wide, but before Ringo could make a move, everyone felt it. Everyone froze in fear. Cold sweat ran down their faces. They felt it. None of them could quite explain the feeling, but it was like gazing at death itself and death reaching out to lay his hands on you. The feeling was dreadful, terrifying, chaotic, truly, truly chaotic. They could all feel the feeling of death creeping upon them. Naruto had said it himself in the past. There were certain aspects about himself that was locked away. Because whenever he went deep into those aspects, they change him. Mind, mentality, soul, understanding. This bloodlust, this need for killing. That part of him that wanted to cause chaos and bloodshed. That part of him that he never understood. That part of him that he still don't understand to that day. That has been cut off away from him because of his own goodness of not becoming the monster that he knew that he was. Because being bad was one thing, ending life was one thing, but losing yourself was another thing completely. Even Ringo was shocked. Ringo felt it as it appeared behind him. He felt it and his body froze up. However, he knew that he was standing right behind him. Ringo slowly turned his gaze and gazed upon Ruto. As usual, blonde hair seemed to be unusually darkened, but it was his eyes, his blue eyes. They looked the same, but yet at the same time, there was this ominous look inside of them. That would have made the strongest man wet himself. And Ringo was clearly not the strongest man. As his whole body went into flight or fight mode. And instead, it simply shut down. However, the look in Ruta's eyes, it made it seem like he didn't even have a soul. His hand seemed to change pigment. Becoming steel or some kind of other material. As Naruto shoved his hand so fast. It cut through Ringo like a knife. Cutting through butter. Naruto pushed his hand right inside of Ringo then. Exhaled smoke out of his mouth. He then spoke. Hanami he said. Ringo eye sockets. Exploded outwards as vines. Ripped out of his socket. His gut was torn open. His back was ripped open as vines and plants. Tore out of the inside of him. In the few seconds that he remained alive. The pain was unbearable agony. Yet. None of them saw the look on Naruto's face. A look of enjoyment. Naruto. Mito screamed out his name in shock and surprise. Naruto blinked as he found himself standing there. Naruto was confused as he pulled his hand back as Ringo. The remains of him anyway collapsed down to the ground. Naruto was confused. One moment he stopped the explosion, the other. Everything went black. The next moment he was standing here. Naruto had no fondest idea of what the hell just happened. None at all. However, Yujito embraced him in a hug. Shocking, Atsui and also Samui as well. Her body moved on its own just like his. When he did to protect her, she was happy that he was alive. Something popped in her mind though. She whispered something in his ear. He heard her perfectly clear. 
as she released herself from him as she grabbed the body of Ringo. She pulled herself over towards her group along with the body. As Naruto looked towards the miner before, rushing towards the man that was still bleeding, as Naruto performed another of his cursed techniques, as he swiped his hand over the man's wound, this was not enough to heal it. This was not a healing technique. It simply stopped the wound from getting worse. It stopped bleeding and dull pain as well, applied to the injury when he did it. The man had passed out, but he would make it. Mito ran over as she hugged Naruto. You're alive, she said. She was so happy. Through the months that they became a team, Naruto had taken the role of a big brother to both her and Sasuke in the group. Kakashi was like the dad, the lazy, unmotivated dad. Sasuke was like the younger, grumpy brother and Mito was the special sister yes they were a little family so she had tears in her eyes hugging him naruto glanced over as sasuke gave him a simple nod that was his way of saying that he was glad that he was okay as well kakashi arrived and placed a hand on naruto's shoulder and gave him a nod as well atsui stood in front of the group thank you for your assistance in helping us handle this matter kanoha ninjas he said, but we must take our leave now. Kakashi gave the group a nod as Yujito kept on looking at Naruto before they went away. Kakashi turned towards Naruto. What happened in there? That explosion? You're not even harming the slightest, he said. To tell you the truth, Kakashi, I have absolutely no idea, said Naruto. Time skip. I have to say, I never thought I would see you hugging anyone, especially the opposite gender and also someone from another village. You truly threw me for a loop there. What the hell happened between you and that guy in the cave? Atsubi said looking towards her. It was nothing. Come on, it can't be nothing. You hugged him. Fine, he saved my life, okay? Everything was coming down and he threw himself over me, taking the brunt of the incident. For no reason at all just to save my life. Not to mention, he was the one that got me and that miner out of the cave, risking his life in the process to slow down the explosion. He did all of that and he didn't even know who I am, risking his own life. I guess, my emotions just got the better of me. So I hugged him. And if you got a problem with that, she said. No, no, the both of them said. We're just surprised, said Samui. Well, we have our target. Well, what's remained of him, Atsui said. Let's head back. As the group was making their way. Time skip. Naruto confirmed with Harrison that he had no idea what happened after the explosion. Harrison once again saw that within Naruto. Being on multiple missions, even Kakashi had saw it as well. Naruto had this desperate need, this urge to save people. It was like he gave himself this responsibility of being the hero for every innocent crying out for help. And that was not good most times. Evidence of what he recently did. Kakashi had spoke to him about that. As he got a better insight into Naruto, and his way of thinking. Naruto did not go into details but Kakashi was fully aware what he was speaking of when he said that he has done so many wrongs that doing a bit of right helped him sleep at night. Kakashi had no idea that it was so traumatizing and affecting on him but he more than any should know that it was easy to hide your emotions. However, Naruto had spoken to a licensed therapist. That conversation was just between them as Naruto told him to keep it to himself. Kakashi did not break his word, so he kept that information to himself as Naruto told him that everything was getting better and better. However, he listened to what Kakashi said that he would try to focus more on 
doing what is within his power because ending his own life by risking it was not going to solve everything. So yes, Luta still had that vision in his mind of the person calling him son. He never knew his father after all he was found inside of a tomb. At the moment Luta was inside of said tomb, as he was gazing around, this is where Harrison had found him as a baby. As Luther was rubbing his hand against the surface, most of the writing on the wall was gone because of time but everything else was basically preserved. Why was that he did not know? Luther kept on moving around until he felt something. He felt like he was about to throw up. Luther felt so dizzy. He was confused. He had to get out of here. But he did not make it far as he collapsed. He blacked out coal. Naruto once again found himself in that strange limbo. As a person appeared in front of him once again. It is good that my message reached you my son. And it brought you to your place of birth. And your connection is getting stronger and stronger. Where is this place? Where am I? You are between life and understanding. There is much. I have to reveal to you much that you don't know about yourself. I know it will be a lot, so just focus on my words and hear me now. The Odas are a powerful race of people. We were the first, my son. We were the first. We were the ones that led with an iron fist, born in each with our extraordinary abilities. We were gifted. We were the saviors of this broken and dying world. We were the ones that were set in place to rule it and guide it. You saw for yourself over the years how truly misguided humans are. They believe that their leaders keep them protected. Their leaders has the right decision to make. But over the span Beyond your life years because you were locked away. You've seen, you've heard. War, chaos, bloodshed. This world is corrupted. And we Odas are the ones to rule and lead it. And you, my son. You have been chosen. You have been blessed by all of us. Possessing all of our extraordinary abilities. You were a gift. A blessing. Many believe that you are a curse. Even the bloodline users, the chakra users, they fear our name. In the end, they believe that we have fallen but through you we shall rise. Because us Odas never die. You have it. You have what it takes to bring our clan back to life. To show this world to place it in a true governed body. To put it back on the map as something that can be controlled and not this bloodthirsty warmongering earth. You can make a change. Only you can do it my son. As long as you remember our words, our talk, this connection shall get stronger. And the more, the more I will inform you about. All you have to do is to remember. Remember, Ruta snapped open his eyes. He took several deep breaths. It was like a clear vision of the past. He remembered every single word. His father. But there were still so many mysteries. What was this connection that he was talking about? Ruta was confused. His people were the first. He speak of chakra like it was something that he was familiar with when it was created but that should be impossible. Naruto pulled himself up as he looked at the tomb remembering that he was found here. What if? No that can't be. That would make him like a thousand years old right? Or beyond that? Naruto left this area right away his mind feeling so conflicted. 
as he left and returned back home to the village, which was not too far away. Time skip. Naruto stood in front of Donzo with your recent encounter with the Kumo ninjas and you showing off some of your more advanced abilities. They returned back to their village with word about you. From what my informant has told me, they're already speaking about you in their village. In this upcoming exam, you will be placed in the spotlight. I have no doubt by the time that it arrive in the village, there will be many spies in the finals. They will be here to witness and see what you are capable of. This will be your chance to step further into the light. For them to not only know the might you possess but the might that will be the leadership of this future village. Do you understand me? Do you understand what is necessary for you to step into this position, this light? Not only for the outside forces but for the inside forces to see just what exactly are you capable of? Yes. I understand. Remember, a Hokage is not only ruthless, they're passionate, they're caring, they're understanding of their people. You have all of those traits. Show them all, Donzo said. As Naruto merely nodded. Time skip. Naruto was making his way. Every now and again, Donzo had his agents contact him to have a little talk. The man believed that Naruto was the right one to govern this village even after he passed. He had what it takes and there was no doubt about that. Danzo had trained him personally for that. Unlike the other robots that he had down there, Naruto had everything. The decisiveness, the mindset to do what it takes. He had what it takes to lead this village. He had leadership qualities. Naruto was going to meet up with Kakashi. This meeting was no doubt about the exam. After Team 7's stellar performance, there was no doubt in his mind that they would be going on to the tune exams. However, that is when Naruto came across someone. It was actually a group of people. Konohamaru was being held up by someone. As the girl with the four blonde pigtails were telling him to release him. Mogi and Odon were shouting at the guy to release Konohamaru, who was trying to fight back. The guy raised his fist as Naruto appeared and grabbed his wrist. Tamari was startled. He appeared in front of her so fast. If he wanted to, he could have ended her life. Konkuro was baffled. I wouldn't do that if I were you. I presume that you're here for the tune exams. We wouldn't want to start a bad reputation between the San and Konoha after all the good fate that we had so far. And to make matters even worse, this child right here is the Hokage's grandson. Konkuro eyes widened hearing that as he quickly released Konohamaru. Konohamaru had seen Ruta before. He had seen him with the boss Mito. Yes, who was the one training this group? She had named herself their unofficial. Jonin Sensei. As Naruto was still holding Konkuro's hand, he was quite the fear bit taller than him. As he looked down towards him, Tamari noticed something off about this guy. He might seem good. He was also incredibly handsome, but something about him made her skin crawl in fear. The way he just appeared, the way he was just so calm. Konkuro. Konkuro froze as he heard that voice. Glancing up toward the tree, someone sunshine down by sand. Are you disgraced in our village? No, it's not that Gar, it's shut up before I kill you. I apologize for them. Gar said looking towards Naruto. Gar looked into Naruto's eyes and saw something unusual. Not only see, but he felt it as well. Oh, it's no trouble. Everything is quite okay. It was just a misunderstanding. Naruto said to him, I see. Who are you? Oh, me? I'm Naruto Oda. Who are you? Gar. Gar of the desert. 
Scar instead looking at Naruto. It was an intense moment as they looked at each other. It seemed like a standoff or something. Before Gara avert his gaze, let's go he said. As him and his team start to leave, Gara had a strange feeling and he couldn't put his finger on it. However, it wasn't just him alone though. Inside of Gara's mindscape, Shikaku was fully awake as he couldn't put his finger on it. What exactly was this strange feeling? He couldn't remember but he felt it before. This strange unknown feeling. Yeah, he definitely felt it before as he tried to figure out what the hell it was. While that was going on, beyond the elemental nation, the same man from before who had contacted with Naruto was currently resided in this strange limbo. However, just like before, he wasn't alone. The other person was also watching the growth of Naruto. You see, I told you that my son would take the older name with Thrive and just like I once did, he will rule. And this time, neither you or anyone else will stand in your way ever again. The other person was quiet until he finally spoke. Your misconceptions on thinking that he has taken your name or his family birthright when you're wrong. You see that child as your successor, as someone to follow in your footsteps to continue down the path that you and your people were going down. However, you're wrong. You couldn't be more wrong. I see something different inside of him. He's a respectable, honorable young man. Even as he grew in power and strength, even as he rise above every ninja that has ever stepped foot on this planet, he will not turn down your path because I see something else inside of him. And it doesn't matter what you tell him, your temptations. You might believe that they're working, but you're wrong. I see otherwise. Tch, you naive fool. That is what you believe. But you will see. He will take my place. And he will lead our people. And with him at the head, with him at the seat, just like before this planet, it will be ours. And no one, absolutely no one will be able to stand in our path. Not your damn pets. Not your brother. Not your sons. No one at all. You just watch and see, Sage. Yes, it was him. The man that the world call a god, the Sage of Six Path was residing in this strange location with the person that called Naruto his son. Yes, they knew each other quite well after all. This man was also a Oda. This man seemed to be at the head. And from the story that was told, the Sage of Six Path died in the battle against the Odas. He risked his life. His life was used to end the tribulation and the chaos. But even then his sons could not agree. Even after all of that bonding they still went against each other and the world was in the toilet for so many years. But that doesn't matter now because things has passed and Ruta was the one that was in the hot seat at the moment. Speaking of Naruto, he was walking. Yes, he was. Along with his group as they were making their way. Naruto mind was not on the tune exams though. It was on something else entirely different. It was what Yujito had whispered into his ears. After she had hugged him, Naruto arrived with his group as Kakashi was there with them. It was rather easy to get past the fake Genjutsu. Sasuke faced off against Rock Lee. Lee was rather surprised. Sasuke was able to keep up with the speed that he was going at. But their battle was cut short because of a turtle. If Sasuke had been too arrogant to take Naruto advice and not let him help him, Lee would have mopped the floor with him. But Sasuke has truly grown. 
Two told them Sharingan in his eyes. He was faster than ever. He was stronger than ever. As a group, was making their way in the Chunin exams. The first part was a ruckus. First there was Inu, making a fuss over Sasuke. As they met up with the other members of the academy class, Naruto did not know them really well. But Mito made sure that he was included as well after all. He was a part of their group now. Sasuke had changed a lot, even Inu had noticed that. The way he treated people. And she was happy about that because he actually spoke to her. Instead of just grunting or just looking away, he spoke to her. The first test was given by Ibiki Marino. The test was rather easy to get through with the amount of abilities at Nuta's grasp. Team 7 went through the first stage. The second stage on the other hand, Uncle Midorashi arrived, breaking through the window as she saw all of them that remained. Team 7 found themselves near the forest of death as Uncle was making quite the fuss about it. Something was wrong. Naruto danger senses was going off. Something was clearly not right. As he gazed around trying to pinpoint where it was coming from. And he then saw her. A woman. A grass kunoichi. She was gazing all around but mostly at the proctor. As she proceeded to smile at him. When she noticed him. She was not ordinary not in the slightest. 15 minutes later they were inside of the forest. As team 7 was making their way, thinking of a plan on how to get their first scroll. When Ruta picked up on something, we have company he said. The next 10 minutes was spent, then plotting their attack process. A team from the hidden rain had saw them. They were going to pick them off like a few little flies they believe. As they created a plan, they were able to duplicate themselves. One of them had a rather special technique, creating hundreds of himself. And upon hitting them, it was like hitting rubber. As Team 7 was making their way, they popped out of nowhere. One of them spoke at the front. What do we have here? Three little flies captured in our trap. I'll give you one chance. Hand over your scroll and you won't get hurt, he said. With a smile on his face. He had a rebreather, but his smile was stretched so wide to intimidate them. As Naruto looked at Sasuke, suddenly, Sasuke's face started to melt. What the hell? To reveal that it was a clone that Naruto had created. His special clone technique, this was not the shadow clone technique. Mito on the other hand, she poofed away. Huh? Where the hell are they? Guess it's just you and me, said Naruto. As the guy heard something screaming, it was his two comrades in hiding. And now it's over. Naruto blitzed past him. The real one who was hiding in the back. Eyes widened as Naruto rushed towards him, wait. How did you Naruto grab his face and slammed him through a tree? He was out like a light. Your technique can't fool me, said Naruto. As he reached into the guy's pouch to pull out the scroll when suddenly, the ground under his feet exploded. Naruto jumped. However, as he jumped, a snake came out of nowhere and swallowed him whole and move off with frightening speed. Mito and Sasuke arrived to the scene as they saw massive trees tumble over. What the hell happened here? Sasuke said looking around. I might have an idea. Mito spun and lashed out with a punch. However, the person twisted her side in an inhuman way and backhanded her into a tree. Sasuke spun as he blurred through Axline. He released a giant fireball. Devouring the person whole. However their body melt into mud. Very quick response you have there. Let's see what else you can do. The grass Kunoichi said with a smile on her face. 
But guys, be in subscribe right here. If you want to see next part and do, like, subscribe, comment down below, turn on that bell notification, stay posted. Remember, share to all of your friends in social media platform. And also, guys, don't forget to go ahead and check out the brand new series over Anime Symbol. So, without further ado, are wasting more time. Let's get the hell out of here. See you guys soon. Peace.